I think you're up now, Kamal. All right, uh, we are live. Um, good afternoon, sorry we are a little bit late. Uh, it's not too bad for Friday the 13th. The traffic was kind of crazy and I had two case conferences in the morning, so couldn't make it on time, but we are here now. Uh, today is Friday the 13th, this is United Medical ACO. My name is Kamal Erkan. We are here again to give you uh, our updates from uh, Delaware Health News, uh, including COVID-19 test and vaccination. And uh, we are gonna actually today, we are gonna try something a little bit different later on, uh, but we are gonna start with our updates first. So I have Tanner uh, Fuchs with me. Uh, you, you guys already know Tanner, but I'm gonna still ask him to introduce himself. Sure, thanks for all. My name is Tanner Fuchs. I'm a member of the business development team. Uh, here with United Medical. Um, so I'm helping to support the ACO, the providers, practices, um, and the ACO as a whole. All right. So, Tanner, so we are going to do the COVID numbers, um, COVID 19 vaccine updates, and vaccination, real people, real perspective. Uh, we are trying to put this in different ways. Uh, so, not to just show one side of it. Um, as much as possible. So we are open. This is open for um, everyone. Uh, but we are also limited with, with our network. So before actually um, uh, we go too far with our uh, session, I just want to make sure that my distribution group is receiving the event. Uh, if you guys give me, give me two seconds. Um, mm -hmm. My mom gets upset when she doesn't get the link. Yeah. Although she doesn't speak English, but she still listens, so she's loyal. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Um, and if there are any live questions, uh, so Tanner, we are uh, set up for answering those questions, right? That's correct, yeah. If anything comes up at any point during the session or really for any of our sessions, um, just as a FYI, um, the live chat option is available and we are able to see those and monitor those so we can try our best to address those during the session. All right, so uh, let's start with the- uh, Hey, I ordered a more ice. I thank you, Ethan. Hi. So Richard, we are able to hear you? Uh, that, I think that's coming that was Susan. Susan. That was not me. Oh, how did Susan? So Susan's on the session? Uh, it looks like it. Okay, I mean, she, she can be, but uh, she needs to be on me. Okay, I think we are good. Okay. So we want to start to get into some of our regular updates, uh, starting with just taking a look at our vaccination rate um, as a country as a whole and where that puts us on our path to herd immunity, which, as we know, at this point is that 75 percent of the population is what the target aim for is. Um, so currently, the United States, we're continuing to see this upward trend uh, in the vaccination rate across the country, um, as it does tie into, of course, a rise in case rates around the country. We're seeing a uh, number of different reasons. That's why people might be starting to want to get vaccinated or go out now and get the vaccine, which we'll, of course, get into a little bit later. Um, but the current pace puts us at still about six months out um, for 75% coverage. So that would be beginning of next year at this point, um, which, of course, as you know, we've been following for a while now, continue to get pushed back. Um, but we are looking at the early next year at this point. So what does that mean for here in Delaware? So Delaware actually is a little bit ahead of the country as a whole. I believe the United States um, is just hovering over that 50% mark right now um, for fully covered, um, where Delaware is just below the 60% mark. Um, so it's starting to level off uh, just a little bit there. As of course, like the trend rates have slowed uh, as, the, as we have progressed later and later into the year and further along in the vaccination campaigns. Um, but we're keeping an eye on that, how it plays out when it comes to that rising case rate, as I mentioned. So down below here, you can actually see what that looks like in the state of Delaware. So as we've moved through July and into August, we're just making sure we're keeping an eye on the case rate uh, that is increasing. 
So I think the, um, one of the, uh, what we discussed at the last session uh, with the breakthroughs uh, and how actually that is changing uh, our understanding. Uh, so kind of what we know, uh, this is um, the vaccination process is one of the biggest studies of our history of mm. medicine because we haven't had this big of a study ever before. So now knowing that uh, breakthrough cases, when we have these little numbers, uh, it does get attention, especially with the social media. So um, I know uh, we do have a lot of reading done uh, and we get a lot of updates from different uh, different places, but there's a mm -hmm. study from the uh, Kaiser Family Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I think that was pretty interesting. Uh, just the numbers does speak, numbers do speak well uh, for themselves. So uh, if you can kind of explain this for, our, uh, for us, uh, what, what we are looking at here. Certainly, as you mentioned, uh, the data here is coming from the Kaiser Family Foundation. So they have been running uh, numerous surveys, studies uh, to kind of gather data on perceptions of the pandemic early on, um, how people were responding to the increasing um, mandates with the uh, vaccine when it came to masks and other sorts of uh, issues related around COVID. Um, so as the pandemic has progressed, they've kind of shifted now their focus specifically to the vaccines. Uh, and some receptions around the vaccine as well across the country. And now that we are getting more and more data um, coming in with case rates now and this far into the vaccination campaign, they put together uh, some data. And that's what this graph is showing is talking about those breakthrough cases and how much they're actually accounting um, for all of the cases uh, that we are now starting to see on the rise. So just graphically what we're taking a look at here. And like Kamal mentioned, this is a topic that we had talked about maybe a week or two ago um, with what exactly these breakout cases are, what they mean, uh, and why exactly uh, we actually were to expect these. So we knew that they were going to happen from the start as no vaccine actually is 100% uh, efficient or has 100% eff an efficacy rate. Um, but we're now we're actually starting to see, see some real life data come out of these um, breakthrough cases around the country. So what we're seeing here, again, just these rates for these different states um, are actually the amount of the whole cases that we're now seeing uh, in this new surge, how many of those are actually coming from vaccinated versus unvaccinated uh, reported cases. So you can see here that the reds representing what percent of all of these new cases are actually coming from unvaccinated uh, patients that are coming in, getting tested. Uh, versus how many are actually coming from a fully vaccinated. So we mentioned that the breakthrough case rate is very, very small. Uh, it's really a fraction of a percent in some places. Uh, and th that's what we're seeing here reflected in this graph. So the um, while we are looking at this one, I also wanted to share um, the daily uh, confirmed cases. So two days ago, we were at 141. And yesterday we were at 143. And uh, for those who are uh, looking at these numbers closely, these are uh, very high numbers for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you were to just go into the click on the USA number, then it's, it's going to give you the um, uh, state um, breakdown. And you can kind of see where the most cases are coming from. So Florida, Texas, and California, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Louisiana, they are in the top six, uh, except North Carolina, uh, uh, I'm sorry, except California. Uh, they are all neighboring, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, kind of pocketed so in that area. It's about 660 people lost their lives uh, yesterday related to COVID. Uh, now, uh, Everyone has their opinions on the vaccine, um, uh, on the testing, uh, how they live their lives. We are here just presenting numbers. Um, uh, and we know that at the end of the day, people um, uh, need to make their own decisions. Uh, but also we do have, to a point, we do also have responsibilities. And it's kind of like a, a tough, um, situation. So I don't, I personally do not know what the right answer is. 
Um, but there are diff different studies that are coming out and our next um, uh, update is coming for the uh, uh, one of the questions that we had from the beginning that we didn't have enough studies for the um, uh, for our uh, patients, female uh, patients who may be planning to get pregnant or who are breastfeeding. And the study shows that uh, there is no risk um, or the risk is in the reasonable limits. Um, and I, we, we do want to share this as well. So um, from the CDC update, um, uh, they are also recommending the um, uh, vaccination for uh, for yourself or and for the baby, um, and this was this was a hot topic for um, those uh, individuals who are planning to have kids or who are maybe already pregnant or who are breastfeeding. I think there is uh, good information here um, that can actually uh, give enough. Um, uh, maybe hopefully it can give enough satisfaction for those who are looking for uh, scientific uh, answers. Um, so tell our next item here is, uh, I think, uh, did you miss my one out of 50,000? Uh, mm -hmm. Correct. So, uh, so this is the uh, how little that study, the breakthrough was, right? So yeah, I, I thought that this was really interesting uh, and actually doing some more reading into it. Um, just from looking at the headline, this is saying that the age restrictions on the AstraZeneca shot have actually ended reports of rare clots. So as um, you may remember, or when they first started to roll out the AstraZeneca vaccine, particularly in the UK, we were seeing a lot of, or not a, not a lot of, um, but we were seeing reports that um, and a lot of media coverage, I guess, is what um, was really fueling a lot of it uh, at the time. Um, and the doubts in the vaccine were just that these rare blood clots were happening uh, and they were unable to necessarily determine whether or not there was any sort of correlation between the two or if it was a cause and effect relationship. Um, so after doing more digging into the data, getting more, um, more data to actually to analyze when it came to these cases, you do see here that the number, uh, as Kamal circled, was about one in 50,000 uh, in the case that we were seeing some issues coming up with the clotting. Um, but what this article really gets into is they were able to analyze in that data that most of, I believe it was like 85% or 90% of those cases were actually happening um, in patients under 40 who had received them. So now that they've limited and kind of readjusted who is eligible to receive this vaccine over in the United Kingdom, they have actually, um, as you see here, ended reports of the clotting. So they were able to kind of readjust this uh, and target a new population um, who weren't seeing this issue come up. So from the percentage wise, so this is, I tried to calculate that um, in my younger days, mm -hmm. I was able to do that, but I think it's, it's like two, two in 100,000, so. Correct, yeah, I have a little calculator off to the side. So that would be about 0.002%. Correct, yeah. Doesn't make much sense. Well, it makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make any sense if you are concerned for the risk, mm. um, right? Um, so now the other uh, issue, well, we, we were kind of discussing this mandate is a big problem. Um, well, big problem because once it's now at the point of mandating, uh, then we are going to have uh, we are going to have difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, so my approach uh, from the beginning uh, was promoting the vaccine when it was ready. So. The step one was uh, I uh, waited for our doctors to give us the okay. So uh, all of our physicians, providers, they got vaccinated at the end of December, early January, they got their first shot. So that was for our first go ahead. Okay, so this is safe for me to take it. So, and then as soon as they did that, uh, we asked them to do a, a short video and I think seven, eight of them, they put, mm -hmm. um, Tanner, you guys helped us to put that together. So, mm -hmm. but our doctors recorded themselves and then we put it all together. So we shared this with all of our patients. So, uh, and we are still 
a heavily promoted vaccination uh, and vaccine. I personally am vaccinated um, as soon as it was available to us. Uh, my parents are vaccinated. My family is vaccinated. Um, and now, when it comes to the mandate, uh, that's uh, that's maybe where I am on a. Uh, I'm not maybe hundred percent yet. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that decision uh, of the mandate. Um, not, well, actually, if the state did include us in the discussions, maybe there are some more stuff that they know that we don't. Uh, I'm not part of those discussions, so. Uh, because I don't know what may be out there that's not available to us, I'm gonna make this uh, based on the limited information that we have. And we are discussing this because the state of Delaware is already trying to make this um, uh, this mandate as of, uh, I guess, nine September 30th. So, right. um, and then if the mandate doesn't, if they are not vaccinated, they have to bring uh, the proof of uh, being negative, so like that's the weekly testing, uh, which is kind of uh, probably going to be kind of inconvenient. So this is for the staff uh, in long-term care facilities, which I thought that was already taken care of, honestly. Uh, staff of acute and outpatient healthcare providers and state of Delaware executive branch employees. So I think the first two uh, is uh, most like this no-brainer, but the third one is tough. Right. Um, now, um, why this also is interesting for us is uh, we, we see this state of Delaware hospitals uh, not being on the same page, mm-hmm. uh, right, Tanner? So um, now what we are showing you here is um, uh, Christiana Hospital, uh, AI DuPont, uh, with the new name of Morris and St. Francis, they are on the mandate side. And then interesting enough, although Bay Health and Nanocoke, they are part of the same ACO of Christiana, meaning that they are clinically integrated, um, but they are not uh, mandating the vaccine. And also BB Hospital is not. So, um, right. yeah, this, I think it's, so it's this is really problematic, good. right? So, mm-hmm. uh, when I see uh, the separation of the hospitals, and especially when they are they are doing a lot of projects together, Medicare ACO, uh, the, the other uh, value-based contracts that they have, they are pretty much doing everything together. When it comes to this, uh, why they couldn't actually make the decision? Uh, well, I was laughing at kind of not at the hospitals, although I could laugh at the hospitals because <laughs> this is kind of laughable that they, they couldn't get angry because this doesn't give us a, give us a good message. So that's an issue, right? Mm-hmm. So the um, when two biggest hospitals, Christiana and Bay Health, and they're on the different side of this uh, argument, then it confuses people like Tanner, people like other people in this office, other patients, other um uh, people who live in this state. So this is um, this is confusing. I do want to show uh, this graph one more time. So then, uh, this uh, maybe uh, maybe our governor can also, uh, if uh, hopefully he's watching this at some point, um, he can actually maybe address this issue. So vaccine mandates. So from here, yes, and vaccine mandate, no. Um, and but this this organization here and this organization they are part of Medicare shared saving uh, so they have a joint venture type of uh, setup now that doesn't mean that they have to do everything together I understand that but what I mean is if they have some uh, entities they work together so in some uh, social issue like this it would be it would have been much better to give the message clearly to the public when the hospitals are on the different page for me to go out there and then tell everyone that vaccine should be mandated is very difficult so um, that's uh, I think that's probably very irresponsible from the hospital side and of course um, 
uh, you know, many people may see this as like, oh, well, he's just blaming the hospitals again, but they make it so much easier for me to blame them. Why can't Bay Health and Christiana and BB, who are in the same uh, value-based organization, make this decision together and then give one un unified message to the public? So that's why we are having some of these issues. And that's going to make it more difficult. Now, there's a study, uh, Tanner, if you would like, if you'd like to talk about this one. Um, uh, this is the vaccine mandate mm. study, I believe. Yeah, this actually was something I was looking at this morning um, that I had found. I thought it tied in nicely to kind of first take a look, obviously, at what we're seeing with as Kamal just went through the different hospital situations in the state. And we're starting to see that now uh, disseminate into some more uh, private sector areas. Uh, and looking back to the state of Delaware now, we see that that's starting to come for some of the state, or the state employees, uh, rather. So kind of this... Uh, Article that surveyed some um, different companies, some uh, from around the country, kind of seeing what their current status is, what their plan might be, um, what they are feeling uh, they're going to do for uh, a max vaccine mandate for their company, whether it's something they feel like is going to have to be required or would be required. Are they currently doing it? Are they possibly planning on doing it or are they not sure? So you can see here, actually, a vast majority are either going to say no or they're not sure at this time. Um, so that does kind of play into a lot of those questions that Kamal was talking about that we're going to see going forward. It'll be really interesting to see what sort of uh, message some of these companies are actually going to uh, to send, not just to their employees, but then rightly to the population and to people around. So this is certainly um, a tough question. And we see that reflected here. So I have a message from Anthony saying that they do now, but... Um... I don't know if he's talking about um, the hospitals they do now, um, but uh, as of last night, they did not. So um, therefore, we are going to, until we see it publicly, it's going to be uh, what we are presenting. Um, so um, now we, uh, we have... Um, uh, we have this new, um, um, we're gonna try something new today. Um, so um, real people, real perspective, reality of COVID. So now what, what we have, uh, what we are trying to do. So uh, one of our uh, client managers, uh, KD, uh, came to me last week uh, or earlier this week and uh, give me some feedback from these events. And uh, she suggested some stuff. And then I said, well, how about if you do something like this? And then something like this is now coming up. So we ask um, uh, five different individuals. Uh, so there will be seven of us. Now I, saw, I see Susan, I don't know if she's joining us, but she's welcome to join us. Um, and uh, guys, if you can unmute yourselves and uh, you can turn your videos on. There we go, so. And there is Muriel. Muriel, that chair looks so nice behind you. <laughs> it does, nice and empty. <laughs> well, I was kidding. Is Susan not coming? So she, was she just sabotaging yeah. our uh, Zoom? I'm not sure how she got uh, the link. I think uh, she may be just but... to Zoom from my uh, calendar, which is fine. Okay, mm -hmm. now, um, so, well, Katie is the troublemaker here. Uh, thank you, Katie, for that. I did uh, actually really initiate it by her, and I maybe put a different spin on it, and then now we are going to try this. So, uh, again, uh, I'm the chairman and CEO of United Medical and United Medical ACO. Now, these individuals, uh, they have different responsibilities in United Medical. Now, uh, can we do this with different people, more people, absolutely, and then we can do more next week, the following week. But the idea is not necessarily just what we tell them, what we tell people, but what people are thinking. And people are uh, the people that you see uh, here on the screen right now. So uh, 
and how much you want to disclose is up to you guys. So I'm going to start with me. Um, so my, and then I did actually kind of, uh, I did go over that a little bit, but uh, I was one of the first COVID cases, probably, as I was trying to <laughs> protect the public. Um, I sent people home uh, that day, if you guys remember, that was end of March, 2020. And we, we started working from home and uh, apparently the problem was at home. So when I, like first day that I worked from home, um, I got my COVID. So April, first week of April, and uh, went through that for 10 days, no problem. Uh, did a lot of education throughout the time to understand what we were going to have. Vaccine was a problem in the beginning. And if you guys remember, there was a TV interview in September. And I, I was one of the people who said, if the vaccine is too early, I may not be taking it uh, because I have to actually see um, if it works. Uh, and then my my safety net for me is, or my what, what, um, what made it okay for me is, all of my providers that I trust, my physicians uh, who are part of our network, they get vaccinated at the end of December, early January. And then I'm like, okay, so this is safe. And then I told my family that we are able to take the vaccine, we are good. So then I got my first dose and second dose. And uh, whenever my provider tells me that I'm gonna need a booster, then I'm gonna get that. Now, and we have three guys here and uh, four uh, female, uh, uh, employees. So I just want to get different perspective from you. You may all have different um, issues uh, personally with the vaccine. If you can just give us where you are and what you think of the um, vaccine and what your perspective is. So we can maybe start with Richa. Sure, come on. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, where, so where, I... Where's Richa actually? Where is she now? Like she's not home. She's not in the office. I'm in... I'm in New York City. <laughs> yeah, which you know, it's not a secret. <laughs> no, it is. It's beautiful out here. I'm just, I'm just joining from here. So, um, yeah, I did not get COVID. I actually was one of the first people, lucky enough people, to get vaccinated from our clinic, from United Medical Clinic. So, I was vaccinated in January, and then I had my second shot in February. My husband works in healthcare. He works at the hospital. So he is in contact with patients who may have COVID. Um, he does not work in the ED, but he has definitely had to do emergency cases on patients that, um, you know, were COVID positive. So for me, my perspective on the vaccine to get vaccinated was number one, protect myself because my husband is working in a healthcare um, environment and also protect my parents. Uh, I have um, a 71 year old dad and a 66 year old mom. So I want to protect them. That was my number one priority. Um, in terms of Kamal, some of the issues you were talking about where there was all these reports of it affects your fertility, it affects this and that. Um, for me, I wanted to make an educated decision and Go with science and science was telling us at the time my doctors were telling me at the time i'm 36 i'm going to be 36 years old they were all telling me you should get vaccinated because the most important thing is that you don't get covid if you get covid and you get severe covid you're in a predicament where you may be hospitalized so uh, i took that as more of an important factor versus all of the other reports that were saying you know this that or the other so that's, that's my perspective. That's where I stand. My entire family is vaccinated as well, Kamal, just like yours. Um, so we are just trying to do what we can to protect ourselves. And I don't think that any of us have more knowledge than the experts. We have to follow the experts. They are, they are the ones that are in the field, know it. And my opinion is my opinion. Your opinion is your opinion. But we need to go with science and we need to go with experts and facts. Great. Um, so, uh, Muriel, we can uh, continue with you. Okay. Well, my experience was I did get COVID um, towards the end of June. Um, it was pretty bad. So when I heard that the vaccine was going to be available to us um, from our clinic, 
I did not hesitate to take that um, because I figured for me personally, I would rather take any small minuscule risk than get COVID again. <laughs> so I knew if there was any chance that I could be protected, I would take that. So that was my first thought. My second thought was, well, if I get vaccinated, then at least I'm protecting my family. It's the responsible thing to do. And then also the public. Um, so I didn't really have any hesitations with getting the vaccine. And I agree with Recha. Um, I trust the science and I trust the medical experts with the information that they've provided to us. Um, but that's my experience. That's my thought process. So do you mind if uh, I uh, ask you one other question? No, I don't mind. Go ahead. <laughs> so like something else happened, right? During this time? After I got vaccinated? Yes. Yeah, after I was vaccinated, um, about maybe a month later, I found out I was expecting. Um, so currently I'm in my seventh month. And um, so far, so good. <laughs> So, uh, congratulations. So, you are pregnant. Thank you. And <clears throat> so, not only um, it doesn't affect the fertility, but you are able to get pregnant. So, we have a proof, maybe. So, um, uh, thank you for sharing this. Uh, of and you are doing two months then, right? Yep, I'm doing October. Um, and, and also, we already have one COVID baby, um, but he's not on the call today. So, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's continue with uh, Kosivi. Uh, thank you. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so my experience, so first of all, my name is Kosivi Luka. I'm part of the business development team as well. Um, my experience with, the, with COVID in itself is Back in around Christmas time, um, I did actually contract COVID. Uh, it was pretty mild for me in terms of like the severity of like my cases. I was very, very tired um, for the most part and lost my sense of smell, but not my taste. Thank goodness, because I love food. Um, but uh, I was I was down for a while. Um, and I just continued just to test positive. I felt fine. I was able to work out. I was able to kind of move around, but I just kept testing positive. Um, so when I spoke to the doctors, obviously I was having my regular provider uh, appointments. They were just telling me, you know, um, sometimes you will continue to test positive because there's a lot of dead cells that are just there. Um, but, you know, just continue to take the precautions and make sure that you are, um, you know, uh, uh, being as safe as possible and trying to be healthy. So they did they did even advise me, you know, if you are feeling okay, continue to um, be active and be, you know, promote, they're promoting me being healthy um, and boosting my immune, my immune system. Uh, it was a way for me to battle against COVID. Um, so after I finally tested negative, um, you know, it's been a bunch of times now and every once in a while I would get like an antibody test in uh, if I am currently not vaccinated. Um, I'm okay to share that it's, it was my choice because of my current status, because I did have COVID, um, and I still have antibodies and, you know, and the purpose of getting vaccinated is to have antibodies against this, this virus. Uh, so if I feel that I have current antibodies, um, as well as somebody else who doesn't, um, we should, I should be okay. Um, and I'm protecting, I'm protected and I want to make sure that you know, my family is also, you know, they're, they have, they'd never had COVID. So they got vaccinated, which was, you know, which to me was good because they now protect it as well. So I am not against anybody who did not have any um, COVID infection or does not have any type of antibodies. I think you should try to um, protect yourself and, you know, have these antibodies protect your, your family and those loved ones around you. Um, but currently I'm not vaccinated just due to the fact that I, had COVID and I have antibodies. Um, there's there's not a lot of research in terms of where where whether or not I you know should get it. But there's recommendations to get it just to be extra safe. Um, but I feel pretty safe. And just looking I, back I, into, I guess maybe question is if mm -hmm. you 
your doctor insists uh, uh, you getting it, getting vaccinated, you probably would be getting it. If my doctor insisted on that, um, yeah. I would I would definitely highly like um, consider it. Um, but at the same time, uh, if if they're looking at my results and they're seeing, oh, you, you still have antibodies, and there's been no consistent, insistent, uh, you know, uh, advice for me to go and get vaccinated, uh, then I wouldn't even consider because I'll just continue to do what they told me to do when I did have COVID was, yep. you know, to boost my immunity, to live a healthy life. And cre- I increased my exercise. I increased, I actually started eating a lot better. Um, for those of everybody here on this, on this line knows the type of way that I eat. So, um, I actually started, you know, really taking that, uh, seriously and I felt better and, you know, ever since. So I think that's one of the things that is, is kind of missing from the conversation is promoting healthier lifestyles. Um, honestly, because, um, a lot of the people that were hospitalized that were in any type of serious conditions, uh, most of those cases were people that have those pre-existing conditions, um, where, uh, where a lot of, let's say, let's say obesity or any type of um, things in the past may, may be high, uh, may be like high on that list. So if people were able to take that time, you know, from that year, we were all at home and start promoting a healthier lifestyle because nobody discussed that at all. I think we will see a lot of these hospitalizations go down. Um, at the same time, it'll be a double, maybe double the time with the vaccination that's available. So those who can't get into those healthier lifestyles get vaccinated, but those who can actually take the time, there will be a lot less hospitalization, I would think. So if we can promote healthier and, lifestyles. Yeah, actually, that's, 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 a, that's an important point. And so you are one of those people who are helping us to do the uh, Monday and Thursday, Thursday presentation for our providers. And from our uh, COVID uh, study statistics, what we know is about 60% of the patients have either obesity or morbid obesity. So mm-hmm. that actually does suggest us that um, a healthy, uh, healthier lifestyle uh, or treating uh, obesity is uh, important, especially during this time. And that's, um, uh, that's, that's really uh, important. So we don't want to actually delay any of those um, that's a good point. Thank you. So, Christina, so we can continue with you. Um, hi, you can hear me okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, I have not had COVID um, and I did get vaccinated. Um, so, I'm had... sorry, you said did you or you, you did or did you, not. Did you did not? I've never had COVID. Um, I did get vaccinated as soon as it was available to me get vaccinated um i have asthma so that was one of the the primary reasons for me getting the vaccine as well as um a lot of members of my family also have asthma so um we wanted to make sure that we were protected um i wanted to make sure that i was not going to be um hopefully or i wasn't going to be causing issues with any of my older family members as well. Um, so everybody or almost everybody in my family at this point is vaccinated. And um, no, that's, that's good. And now, uh, Katie, so uh, as the troublemaker of this session, thank you for uh, bringing this, bringing this up. So this was a great idea. So tell us about what's happening with you, what your perspective is. Sure. Um, So I got COVID last July in really the second wave of the peak of it, right after Muriel, actually. And um, for me, it wasn't terrible. You know, I had some, I had most of the routine symptoms of I lost my smell, I lost my taste. um, I was really tired. Took me about two weeks to recover, but that was last July. So originally when this data was coming out, they said we weren't sure how long the natural antibodies would last. Maybe it's three months, six months. Um, my mom was an organic chemist. I've gotten vaccines growing up and I'm very much an advocate of vaccines, but I wanted to see how this played out with the recommendations. So fast forward to it's now August of 2021. And last month I went to have my routine blood work done for my physical. And I also got an antibody test and it came back that I still do have active antibodies. 
And um, for me personally, I have not gotten the vaccine at this point. Like Kosibi said, the point to me of the vaccine is to protect the community by having an immunoresponse. The point of getting vaccinated is so that you create the antibodies, create the immunity so that you are not contracting the vaccine. So as somebody who has those antibodies and has that immuno response, I don't feel that, you know, when we're talking about mandates, I don't think that it's something that I want to get at this time. Am I opposed to getting in the future? Not necessarily, but I don't believe that that should be mandated for me. And part of why I brought this up is I don't hear about this at all. I'm hearing about people who are saying you don't care about your community if you're vaccinated. And then I'm hearing about people who are not vaccinated at all. So I think it would be interesting that um, if you do get vaccinated, you get that card, right? And so you can go and see a Broadway show, for example. I know Reach is in New York right now. Um, If a person gets vaccinated and doesn't necessarily have, you know, a quite strong enough immuno response, they can still participate in events. But I, as somebody who's not vaccinated, but still who has that response, cannot go see that show. So that was part of my issue with this, um, as long as what, what Kosibi said, it, it definitely is a big health factor. I agree with that as well. Um, and I think also I can speak for me and I can, I can empathize with people in my situation, people who have had COVID, who are active with antibodies, but I necessarily can't speak for Christina. You know, I'm not in that same situation as her. I'm not in the same situation as Muriel. I'm not expecting So I just really wanted to bring light to that there are different categories of people at this time, and I don't feel like that's being discussed. Right. So, Tanner, go ahead. And Kamal, I was just going to say, just to add on to what what Katie was saying, um, especially with the being able to have those these mandates, what we're going to end up seeing is a lot of false reports. People are going to start grabbing fake vectors, uh, nonstop things online. Yeah, (laughs) fake vaccine cars to be able to uh, go and see shows and plays, which I think is just causing more of an issue. Do you remember like uh, a couple of weeks ago when I came to you guys with one of the patients, Mm -hmm. the surgical one, and then I was freaking out because Mm the patient was positive after two uh, vaccinations and I wasn't happy with what we have on the chart. Luckily, it was correct, but the proof was not like so reliable. So mm-hmm. if that's the proof that we are taking, then everyone can actually produce that somehow because we are the fake IB heaven uh, and mm-hmm. the, the college, uh, uh, you know, they, they are trained in, the college, in college already. So it won't be too difficult for those millennials to just have the fake um, vaccine IDs, and I'm not suggesting that they should, but uh, but that's that's a, that's a good point. So, uh, and I, I was just reading that actually a couple of days ago. Uh, Tanner, uh, if you don't mind just sh- sharing yours as well, so then yeah. we can kind of um, uh, uh, close this. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I personally did not have COVID or contract COVID at any point, um, although it did, Uh, hit home pretty close on a multiple different occasions. So it started um, early on. It was um, really affecting uh, life, livelihood, of course, for everyone uh, at the time. But um, what I was really worried about uh, as the pandemics were really progressing and starting to get worse and worse over the summer, uh, things were getting obviously shut down. We weren't able to go and gather with friends and family uh, at the time when uh, a roommate of mine actually contracted COVID. Uh, it was right around the time one of my best friends who had who had pushed his wedding off two times uh, was set to get married, uh, and I was in the wedding but ended up having to miss it uh, for a quarantine. And then after that, um, I had my personally my girlfriend had both her parents pass away from COVID. Uh, we had a lot of it in the family. There were some other um, personal problems going on in um, some of my extended family. So I, I knew I've never been one of those people that it didn't have to affect me for to know it was real. I know that it's real and it's happening everywhere. It's affecting people and their families on so many different levels. Um, so that was never an issue of mine. It, not that it, it happening to me was what really triggered it. Um, but I knew from just personal experience that when I was given the opportunity to be able to protect not just myself, but those around me, um, if it were to, uh, like we've been discussing it have those antibodies to not make sure I'm not contracting 
and then spreading in my uh, friends and family's group, my uh, immediate circles that I was being able to still hang out with, uh, I knew I was going to get it. And then when it was made available to us and um, we had the opportunity to get it early on, right when I was able to, uh, I knew for someone in my situation and then talking also with my doctor, of course, it was recommended. So I knew that it was the right time for me to get it. So um, I, I just wanted to make sure that I was uh, going to be okay, not actually be able to um, have those antibodies created. But if it was for the vaccine, then that's what was right for me at the time. Uh, and I feel like I, I'm pretty confident in that choice, um, especially now that my family has started to get vaccinated as well. Um, and we're able to start to see each other again and get into um, have some of those larger gatherings and um, get back to some sort of uh, sense of safety when it comes to big family gatherings, big family functions, and and making sure I'm okay to to go into situations like that. So, so no, this is this is uh, kind of like um, if you were to kind of summarize this. So we have uh, three men, four women in this call. Uh, ages from 24 to 47. I, I'm not going to tell you who 47 is. So uh, four people had COVID, um, three people did not. Five of us are fully vaccinated. Uh, one of us is pregnant. And two of, three of us were planning to maybe get pregnant. Um, and out of those two are vaccinated so um, and in our company vaccine is not mandated my goal was to make the vaccine available because uh, we are outpatient and we are the business office so we were not in the first batch right away so we had to kind of put pressure on the state because uh, the hospitals were um, uh, on the there were they were on the first line and we were saying that we are providing support we are providing the care uh, we have to be vaccinated so that was kind of our issue we, our first fight was we want to get vaccinated but now our fight is on the other side where people um, you know not people actually i think the politics maybe makes it a little bit um muddy where um science is kind of like covered by politics and then the opinions of the different sides is making this difficult to clearly see what may be available. So I don't like the mandates. Um, and just between seven of us, um, uh, I know if it was mandated, if United Medical was to mandate this, we would probably lose two employees. That's how I feel. So that's why it would be irresponsible for those other companies to make these decisions without engaging their employees because everyone's situation is different. So we, seven of us, we have different stories uh, and we, we work in the same office. I think that's the, maybe a perspective that we are trying to give from this. And I'm hoping that people can understand this just to kind of uh, hear it from different, like we don't have one uh, set agenda. So we are trying to give different perspective of what's happening and we don't have the answer. Uh, what all we know is we read, uh, we try to learn more uh, from the scientific events uh, researches. So as soon as the pregnancy research was available, the first thing that, first thing is we read it. So, but until then we didn't have any references. Now we have, so um, that's how we are processing. And hopefully this does, uh, this, this, this was helpful for those who were looking for different, uh, uh, to, to just to hear a different perspective of uh, COVID. So, well, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for being part of this. This was really important. Uh, and we'll be back next week. Uh, this week, we don't have the Bariatric Friday. Um, Dr. Irga is uh, off this week. So, but next week, we'll be back uh, with two events. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Have a nice weekend.